those of you who have joined our Q&A sessions in the past, you're going to have to listen to me go through my little introductory spiel, which I give every time. Um, but let me start out by introducing Nellie Marvel, um, the Cannabis Control Board's Outreach and Education Manager, and Carrie Jaguer, um, the Board's Compliance Director. So they are here with me tonight uh, to help answer everybody's questions. Thank you for being here, both of you. <clears throat> um, so as I say at all of these uh, Q&A se sessions, this the goal of these is to provide time for people who are um, out there trying to comply with the regulations um, for them to get their questions answered. And it's um, not the appropriate time for uh, giving feedback or complaints or public comment, although those are always welcome. Um, and there is a portal on our website that you can submit that information and we hope that you will. Um, also at our monthly board meetings, we have a public comment period. Um, and that is also intended to gather uh, feedback from the public. So, but for the Q&A sessions, we really try and keep it to um, substantive uh, questions and answers so that we can assist people who are trying to comply um, with the rules and regulations. So um, the other, the only other kind of opening remark I would like to make <clears throat> tonight is really about Vermont's advertising regulations. I think everybody, um, you know, who's out there trying to comply is aware uh, that the the framework for regulating advertising is really pretty stringent um, in Vermont. And I'm not going to go through all of them right now. Um, Nellie will do so later on. But I just wanted to say that they provide really, you know, the legislation um, provides numerous and very specific requirements for cannabis ads in the state, including regulations related to the content and the location and the target audience. And really the bottom line is that the legislature imposed pretty significant restrictions on cannabis establishments that want to advertise their products. Um, and, you know, the intent of these restrictions were to protect public health, safety, and welfare. And I would just like to point out additionally that um, the legislature also uh, in 7 VSA 864 um, required cannabis establishments to submit their advertisements, all of their advertisements, to the Cannabis Control Board prior to disseminating those ads. And it, that statute also imposes on the board the authority to review those ads and make sure they're in compliance with the rule and regulation before, um, before the ad can be disseminated. So uh, it's a little bit of an unusual situation and um, we are glad to be here to help provide some guidance. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nellie. All right, wonderful. So um, we did uh, ahead of time before this meeting ask folks to uh, submit questions or give folks the opportunity to submit questions uh, via email and we had a number of uh, questions that were submitted. So I'm going to start uh, this meeting off by answering some of those questions or answering all those questions. Um, and then we also have a um, uh, matrix that we actually wanted to share with folks as well. So uh, to start out with, uh, we got one question from several from several people asking what counts as uh, reliable, verifiable, and current data for demonstrating audience composition and making sure that um, your audience meets that 15% rule laid out in statute. Um, so the CCB cannot take uh, anyone's just word for it that your audience is going to meet that 15% uh, that 15% rule. Um, we need to be able to have hard data that demonstrates to us that not more than 15% of your audience is going to be under the age of 21. And that needs to include some sort of citation. That data that you submit to us needs to include some sort of citation or branding that very obviously shows that the source of that data is a third party. So it needs to come from a third party that has no um, substantive affiliation with you as the cannabis establishment. Uh, a simple list of advertising venues is not going to be uh, sufficient for meeting that 15% rule, even if those venues are, for example, bars. Um, you know, the drinking age in Vermont is 21, as it is uh, everywhere. And 
you know, bars, if you wanted to display a poster in uh, for your cannabis establishment in a bar, the CCB can't know, for instance, if those bars have table service where uh, families might be eating a meal. Uh, if a bar was to, for instance, ID at the door and that bar can say to us that they know for a fact that no one under the age of 21 has access to their premises, um, we would be able to approve that as an advertising venue, but we would need to have some sort of statement from that bar saying no one under the age of 21 comes in here. Um, but the fact that just the drinking age in Vermont is 21 does not in and of itself uh, meet that bar for reliable, verifiable, and current data to demonstrate uh, audience composition. Um, we also got a couple of questions from um, Scott Sparks of Vermont Bud Barn. Um, he asked if a brochure can be put in a private business such as a B&B or an Airbnb without the CCB having to approve. Um, and the answer to that is uh, very much most likely no. Uh, it's, it's much more than likely that the content of that brochure would count as an advertisement, meaning that would need to be submitted to the board for approval ahead of time and meet all of the required criteria which includes the uh, the fifteen percent rule that I just mentioned uh, a moment ago. Uh, if a brochure was purely educational and contained nothing that might induce a member of the public to purchase cannabis, um, it's it's possible that it might be allowable, but it would still have to criteria uh, comply with all the other criteria. Um, of not appealing to folks under the age of 21, avoiding false or misleading statements, claiming curative effects, or promoting underconsumption. And I will also just say that to be clear, uh, the CCB has reviewed um, a few brochures at this at this time, and all of them thus far have counted as advertisements, um, and none of them have been able to demonstrate that they've met the 15% rule yet. Uh, he also asked what exactly is or is not allowed on social media. Uh, Bryn, did you have anything to add to that? Yes, I was just going to interrupt you, and I'm sorry for interrupting, to remind everybody that we are going through the questions right now that we've received from the public prior to the Q&A session. And then after that, we're going to talk about um, this matrix that the board has developed that we are using to review all advertising submissions. And that is going to answer a whole lot of other questions, including what is an advertisement, what counts as an advertisement. And then we are going to turn to the Q&A. So just wanted to remind folks um, who joined us a few minutes late, that is the order of things. Thank you, and sorry for interrupting. All good. So uh, what is or is not allowed on social media? Are pictures of products allowed? Are um, sales, like offering 10% off of products allowed? Um, so. In a little bit, we're going to get a little bit more into detail of what's allowable and what's not when we talk about that matrix that we've mentioned a couple of times. But uh, generally speaking, a business is allowed to run sales, but putting those sales on social media would count as an advertisement that needs to be approved by the CCB. Um, Pictures of approved products that are available to sa for sale are also allowed, but again, would need to be approved by the CCB as those would likely count uh, as an advertisement. If uh, if businesses are interested in seeking sort of categorical approval for social media posts and don't want to keep looping back to us every time they want to do a new campaign on their social media page, um, it is possible to uh, for us to issue a categorical approval for certain types of posts provided they meet certain criteria. And I just like go through those criteria um, really quickly uh, for folks as well. Um, so posts will not contain images or texts regarding specific products that are sold by uh, sold by the cannabis establishment. It can contain broad categories such as sun-grown flour or pre-rolls or edibles and so forth um, but then those those spe those specific products sold by um you know a specific uh, specific strain by a specific cultivator you would need to um have a link to your age-gated website uh in order to have those actually be viewable 
Um, images for any of these posts need to only contain generic pictures, uh, no branded labels, no branded packaging, anything like that. Um, you could have a picture of an artful arrangement of pre-rolls or, uh, or cured flour, for instance. Um, but again, no specific, um, no specific branding or anything like that, as that would, um, that would count as an advertisement that needs specific approval by the CCB. Um, I will also note that, um, you know, for instance, having a picture of a pile of gummies uh, would likely count as appealing to folks under the age of 21. So uh, that would, as far as generic types of generic pictures that would or would not be allowed, um, that would likely uh, not be allowed as it would appeal to folks under the age of 21. Uh, posts may describe the menu or uh, sections of the menu or the general the general availability of products for sale um, using descriptors like our menu is bigger and better than ever or shop for your favorite strains online. Again, very generic statements. Um, you can reference specific vendors, but you may not promote specific products by that specific vendor. So you could you could say, for instance, we have two new strains uh, from local grower XYZ that just hit the menu today. Or come check out our full lineup of, uh, um, of rosin from ABC manufacturer. Things like that. But again, you can't you can't reference any specific products. Um, Posts should direct, I mentioned this a little bit before, but posts should direct consumers with a hyperlink to the cannabis establishment's age-gated website where they can view the current menu or purchase products online for, um, for store pickup. Uh, these posts should also be followed by a, a comment with the, uh, the health warning, uh, the approved health warning as a picture for, um, for the post. Um, and that would use the image that is provided by the CCB and approved as a, as a health warning. And it's available on our guidance page. So we also got a number of questions uh, from Michael Bradshaw over at Seven Days. Um, are there any restrictions on employment advertising for cannabis retail businesses? Um, and answer to that is, they still need to meet the sort of general advertising criteria for not appealing for not appealing to folks under the age of 21. Um, and no one under the age of 21 can work at a cannabis establishment anyway. Uh, it needs to avoid false or misleading uh, statements, claim curative effects, can't promote overconsumption, that sort of thing. But beyond that, job posts don't need to be approved by the CCB. They count as educational posts. And again, in a little while, we're going to get into the specifics of what counts as advertising and what does not count as advertising. So we'll go over that in a, in a little bit of time as well. Um, but generally speaking, job posts um, wouldn't count as advertising and do not need to be approved by the board. Our licensed cannabis retailers able to run ads for non-THC products such as uh, CBD, hemp, et cetera, smoking or vaping paraphernalia or growing supplies or seeds without getting CCB approval for these ads. Um, no, you still need to get a CCB approval for, uh, for those products. The CCB must preemptively review and approve advertisements for all products that are sold by a licensed cannabis establishment. So those need those do need to be sent to us and we do need to approve those ahead of time. Our publications subject penalty if an ad uh, if they run an ad that includes violations. So um, neither state law nor board rule grants the authority for us to issue uh, civil citations to publications that run non compliant ads or ads that haven't gone through the proper channels for uh, for approval. Um, I will say that we do ask that uh, publications have just a, have a passing familiarity with the types of advertisements that would be compliant or not compliant, just so they can do a little bit of their own um, due diligence to make sure that they're not running non-compliant ads. But the board does not have authority to issue um, issue citations um, around non-compliant advertisements. 
Uh, can out-of-state cannabis businesses advertise in Vermont uh, in Vermont-based publications and websites? Um, and if so, are they subject to the same restrictions as Vermont businesses? So, kind of similar vein to the question I just answered, the Cannabis Control Board's jurisdiction is very specifically over Vermont businesses and running advertisements for Vermont cannabis establishments. We do not have jurisdiction over out-of-state businesses or out-of-state publications that run advertisements. All right, next page here. Um, are digital ads subject to the same approval process? Uh, and then a question about disclaimers. Um, can the health disclaimers appear on the businesses uh, sites instead of on the advertisements due to space restrictions on digital ads? Can there be a much more simplified disclaimer on digital ads due to these space restrictions? Um, so all advertisements are subject to the same approval process, regardless of whether they're digital or not. Um, the definition of what constitutes an advertisement under Vermont state law doesn't make a, a differentiation about whether it's a digital ad, whether it's a print ad, whether it's a, a video advertisement, it's it's all advertising and is all subject to the same restrictions. Um, and as far as the required health warning goes, there is there's only one set of approved health warnings and they must appear on all advertisements, regardless of the medium in which they appear. Uh, has there been a delay in approving print ads since retail became legal last year? Um, and what does the current time frame look like for ad reviews? Um, this is actually probably helpful information for folks to just have a little bit more of an idea about our process here at the CCB for reviewing and approving ads. Uh, CCB staff meet weekly every Monday to review submitted advertisements, and we have consistently turned around decisions uh, within about a 14 day time frame. So businesses should should generally expect a response within that time. The cutoff, we do have a, a cutoff for uh, reviewing um, submitted ads. If you submit an ad by close of business on the preceding Friday before that Monday advertising meeting, um, you can expect your ad to be reviewed and discussed at that meeting. But anything that's submitted after sort of close of business around 4.30 p.m. on Friday, um, you may not necessarily have your ad reviewed at that Monday's meeting, and you may need to wait an additional week to have your advertisement reviewed and uh, potentially approved. So if an ad needs corrections, when can a business expect to be approved um, so, th so businesses can plan for meeting advertising deadlines? This is a little tricky to um, this is a little tricky to predict because the timeline is really going to vary for a uh, review of resubmitted advertisements based on a number of factors. Um, the complexity of the submitted campaign, the number of changes that the CCB has looped back and said like, hey, you need to tweak this. Um, there's a number of things that could affect the timeline for when that could be approved. Um, and there's there's also a lot that goes into advertising review and, you know, we endeavor to be as objective and as systemic as possible, systematic as possible when we're making a call about these advertisements. But, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of subjectiveness that goes into this. We have to make a call about whether or not an advertisement is going to appeal to a really broad group such as people under the age of 21. That's an incredibly broad group, and we have to make sure that as best we can, that advertisements aren't going to appeal to anyone under the age of 21. Uh, to that end, uh, we've created a matrix that I've talked about a couple of times to assist us in doing just that. Um, I will ask folks to please stay muted and keep their cameras off um, while uh, we haven't opened up the floor to questions quite yet. We will get to uh, we will get to answering questions in in a moment directly. Um, but to just talk through this matrix a little bit, uh, we don't generally share our any sort of internal evaluation tools that we've created. But we we decided that given the complexity and the restrictiveness of advertising for cannabis establishments in Vermont, it would really benefit um, both the public and um, it would benefit CCB staff as well to um, to share our advertising evaluation matrix. So 
with that, this is already up on our website. The um, the event uh, link that you would have clicked on to access this uh, this event uh, has has the link to this matrix in there. It's it's available for download, so it's available on our website ccb.vermont.gov. Um, but with that, I am going to share my screen and uh, go through this. Just give me one second. OK, hopefully people can see um, an Excel spreadsheet that's up on my screen now. So first things first, this is really pulled very directly from pretty much verbatim from three sources. Um, it's pulled from state law, which is cited here, board rule, and our guidance. So um, as you're going through this, the first question is just um, whether or not the um, whether or not what you want to run even counts as advertising. Uh, Bryn, did you have a did you have something to add before I launched into this? I was just going to ask if you could zoom in on it just a little bit. Oh yeah, let me see if I can. Might be tricky. I don't know. Oh, I can. Ha ha. <laughs> Better. All right. Great. So, um, is it advertising? Uh, things that are not advertising. Product labels or on cannabis or cannabis products. Uh, editorials or other news articles or segments, uh, so long as no money was paid by the cannabis establishment for that feature. Educational or instructional materials that does not otherwise encourage a member of the public to make a purchase. Or attached signs to the premises of the cannabis establishment, which are intended solely to identify the location of the establishment. And I added emphasis on the attached there. Um, things that are advertising and would need board approval. Um, any publicly viewable or or written or verbal materials meant to induce the sale of cannabis or cannabis products. Window displays, sandwich boards, or other outdoor signs that are not this down here, attached sign. Um, any other outdoor signs, those would be considered advertising. So you've answered whether or not um, whether or not it's advertising and can now figure out whether or not you need to actually submit it to the board for approval. If it's not advertising, doesn't need to be submitted to us. If it is advertising, it does need to be submitted to us. Email ccb.advertising at vermont, all spelled out, dot gov. Uh, include your business name um, in the subject line and we'll, uh, we will review those advertisements. It needs to avoid appealing to anyone under the age of 21. And there's a few different ways that we evaluate this. Um, whether anyone depicted in the advertisement appears to be um, over the age of 21, that's um, that would avoid appealing to them. If it doesn't use cartoons, images, or other characters marketed to children and those under the age of 21. And then we have some additional information on the types of disallowed imagery and disallowed statements. So not these here, not allowed in uh, in cannabis advertisements, and I'll go through them a little bit. Animals or inanimate objects with anthropomorphic or neotenic features. So that means um, animals or, uh, you know, cars, machines, things like that with human-like or childlike features. And I have a couple of um, pictures just to kind of demonstrate what those, what those means. So here's, uh, here is, Image from uh, the movie Cars from Disney. This is an anthropomorphic car. It's got eyes. It's got a smile. It's kind of it's kind of a human-like car. Um, so something like that would not be would not be allowed. This is also from Disney. This is the character um, Thumper from Bambi. This demonstrates both anthropomorphic and neotenic features. So. 
things like neotenic features are basically the types of features that could be um, described as like childlike or baby-like. So um, short, shortened arms, shortened limbs, things like that, pudgy features, round bellies, large kind of baby-like eyes, things like that. Those are those are kind of neotenic features. And then of course we've got a rabbit that has eyebrows. That's also anthropomorphic. Rabbits don't generally have eyebrows or um, beautiful long fluffy eyelashes and smile. So again, this this checks the box for both anthropomorphic and neotenic. Um, so I included I included both of those just as way to demonstrate the types of things that might count as anthropomorphic or neotenic. Other disallowed imagery or statements. Um, statements or phrases that would appeal to children and those under the age of 21. Humans, um, so actually people with uh, neotenic or comically exaggerated features, such as the things you might find in like car cartoons geared towards children or anything like that. Humans, animals, or inanimate objects with superhuman or fantasy abilities or features. Um, so, you know, Superman, superheroes, things like that, or, you know, ability to, you know, teleport or anything like that. Superhuman or fantasy abilities. Um, nothing like that. Imagery that prominently just features candy or other food imagery that would disproportionately appeal to children. And these last two here um, are kind of the only two that uh, you would be able to have potentially one of these. And so long as you don't have any of the other disallowed imagery, um, you might be OK. So they're kind of like, um, aggravating factors, I guess you might you might call them. So uh, fonts that would disproportionately appeal to children, especially when paired with one of the other disallowed imagery criteria. So for instance, you might have some sort of like fun bubbly font, but if it's just in black and white, um, that might be OK. But if it was a fun bubbly font that was like surrounded by cookies and candy and things like that, that would likely um, not be OK and would appeal to folks under the age of 21. Imagery with overly bright or saturated color schemes, uh, again, especially when paired with one of the other disallowed imagery criteria. Um, so again, you might have a very bright and colorful label, but if it's a bright and colorful label that's paired with a cute bunny rabbit, um, that might um, that might not be OK. All right. Avoids false, true or misleading claims. Avoids claims of curative effects. Um, so, you know, that taking this product is going to make whatever ails you go away. That would not be allowed. Avoids associating the use of cannabis with improved physical or physiological performance. Avoids associating the use of cannabis with a generally improved lifestyle. So you can't claim that, you know, smoking your brand's pre-rolls are going to make all of your ills go away. Um, and avoids advertising or marketing materials that closely resemble anything that is trademarked. So again, I pointed to uh, Disney's cars as being something that is an anthropomorphic, uh, um, anthropomorphic image. Um, you especially can't use that on two levels. It is trademarked and it is anthropomorphic. All right, moving on. It uh, avoids promoting overconsumption avoids offering free samples or cannabis or cannabis products, avoids offering any kind of prize, award, or other inducement of sale. So um, just an example that would be uh, inducement of sale that would not be allowed, uh, free hoodie with the purchase of, you know, a pre-roll pack. Um, and I do note that normal price discounts, as we mentioned earlier, are allowed. So um, you are allowed to you are allowed to advertise that, you know, 
you're having a 15% off sale or something like that. And then I talked about this a little bit earlier, provides reliable, independently verifiable and current data to show that less than 15% of the ad, audience of the ad will reach those under the age of 21. Couple of notes here, um, outdoor advertisements. Outdoor advertisement audiences are assumed to be the general public with a concentration higher than 15% under the age of 21. Outdoor ads are not allowed unless the advertiser can show that the outdoor space is not accessible to the general public and they can provide reliable, verifiable, and current data that shows audience composition. Um, no on window displays. That counts as an advertisement and would count as an outdoor advertisement. So it falls under the same category as above. Um, they're disallowed unless a business can show that their display meets the same criteria as those outdoor advertisements. Advertisements need to contain the CCB health warnings that are found on our guidance page. I pulled all three of those up. This one here, the big health warning, not safe for kids contains THC. Your advertisements have to contain all three of those. Advertisement accurately reflects that the, the product being sold by the cannabis establishment and must not contain inaccurate information about the product. For example, incorrect THC content or test result claims. Couple notes on social media and on websites. Um, your social media post may not be an advertisement. Refer to above. Is it an advertise? Is it an advertisement? If no, doesn't need to be uh, reviewed by the CCB ahead of time. If it is, it does need to be reviewed by us. Um, websites and all social media posts, regardless of whether it's an advertisement or not, must comply with the general advertising restrictions of appealing to those under the age of 21, using false or misleading statements, claiming curative effects, promoting overconsumption, inducing sale. Um, again, regardless of whether or not that post uh, qualifies an advertisement. Your website must be age gated. And social media posts um, if they are an advertisement, I uh, may only promote products through links to their age gated website. So you cannot promote products, for instance, through uh, Facebook Marketplace or anything like that. That is that is not allowed. So um, the idea behind this matrix is if your ad, if you are coming up with an advertising campaign and you're looking through, you're looking through this matrix, if you can answer yes to all of these questions in this first column here um after evaluating whether or not it's advertising if you can answer yes to all the rest of these yes it avoids appealing to anyone under 21 yes it avoids these claims yes it avoids promoting overconsumption yes it avoids this yes 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 we provide that data um and yes it reflects the product um your your advertisement likely will uh, pass muster by the CCB. Again, it still needs to be sent to us ahead of time at ccb.advertising at vermont.gov. But if it checks all of those boxes, it likely will be approved. So again, this matrix is available on the CCB website. Um, download it, keep it in your records, review it. It'll save, it'll save you a boatload of work uh, having to redo your advertisements um, and it'll be able to get your um, you'll be able to get your ads up in front of people much more quickly without having to go back and review things a few times. So. That was a lot. <laughs> That was a lot. Nellie, thank you so much for going through all that. Um, yeah, I wanted to add one um, small thing about the window display conversation. Um, our rule provides that window displays um, that are visible to a person standing outside um, will be considered outdoor advertising for the purposes of our rule. And because more than 15% of Vermont's population is under the age of 21, any window displays that would allow the general public to view cannabis, cannabis products, pictures of cannabis or cannabis products, or any advertisements inside the store um, 
are, are not going to be allowed. And just a note there that cannabis establishments don't need to submit their window displays to us the way they would their other advertisements um, because compliance staff are going to go and inspect each uh, cannabis establishment with a window display to ensure that it's in compliance. That was the only thing I wanted to add. Um, and now we will open it up um, for questions. We have uh, Bailey McKenna. Yeah, hi, Bailey McKenna here. Um, my partner and I are thinking about opening a licensed, uh, licensed cannabis establishment. We had a few questions regarding uh, social media advertising and what is and isn't allowed, um, specifically as it relates to free product giveaways and partner advertising. Um, just generally, how are these uh, approved? Um, how are these guidelines enforced? And then what are the ramifications for breaking these guidelines? Great. So, uh, oh, go ahead, Bryn. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, Nellie just went through our, our uh, review process for you. Um, and you can also find, uh, find an outline of what is considered to be um, an advertisement for purposes of social media and our advertising guidance. Um, but Nellie and Carrie, you wanna, you wanna weigh in on the two aspects of that question? Sure, go ahead first Nellie and then I'll follow up if you. Yeah, I think, um, well, I think the uh, compliance and enforcement aspect is better suited to you, but I will say, yep. um, you know, the, as far as the, the product giveaways, um, Free samples of of products are are not allowed um, under I think both board rule and, and state law, um, and that is that is laid out in the ad matrix that um, that I just went through. Um, that any sort of product giveaways um, are not allowed. And I just wanted to follow up. You're talking about sort of the third party giveaways, like when Hedy. Hetty gives away a basket of products. Um, Hetty is a yeah. licensee. Yep. Hetty is not a licensee, so we don't really have jurisdiction over Hetty Vermont, but we uh, do have jurisdiction over the licensees. And you shouldn't be offering samples to the general public. Um, so even though it's a partner, third party organization, you might be getting a letter if that if uh, if you uh, find yourself in that situation in that letter uh, the you know it's gauged versus a sort of making folks aware what the rules are and if it continues the the severity of that letter you receive um, it increases increases all the way up to you know penalty or revocation of a license Sure. So just so I understand, um, it sounds like the first course of action for enforcement is more or less a love letter saying, hey, we caught you, don't do it again. Um, and then subsequent action will be taken if there are um, more violations going forward. Is, is that understood correctly? Yeah, um, it, we're going to make, make sure you understand the rules. Make sure you understand the rules and it's a invitation to voluntarily come into compliance gotcha um i appreciate that I, i've noticed some uh light, larger licensed cannabis establishments um specifically advertising free giveaways with other partner organizations and my understanding that was that was specifically called out as being non-compliant um so just wanted clarification on that and to understand um how that's handled and and um how that'll be taken care of going forward so thank you we do have a sort of ccb.compliance at vermont.gov that uh, licensees often make us aware of other folks that are not coloring inside the lines and we do follow up when we receive complaints. I appreciate that. Thank you so, so much for your time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, we have is it Reverend Baker. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my uh, my question. Um, I have two unrelated questions, if I may. 
Um, the first one is back to social media. Um, it seems like most of this discussion about social media posting is kind of focused on um, retailers. Uh, so I'm curious on the manufacturer or cultivator side, um, if posting an image of a finished product with a label would be considered an advertisement. And my question is because in your ad matrix, you say that a label is not an advertisement, but somewhere else you mentioned that um, pictures of specific products aren't allowed for um, social media posts, but it sounded like you were talking specifically about retailers. So since the cultivator and manufacturer can't sell, can't really sell directly uh, to the consumer, is that considered an advertisement or is that just educational like this product exists? And then I'll ask my second question after, if that's okay. So the actual product label on the cannabis product, like the product label on at the store, at the cannabis retail store, um, would not be uh, an advertisement. But uh, posting your posting the label, um, like posting a picture of the finished product um, on social media, uh, I think that would likely count as as an advertisement. Yes despite, regardless of whether or not you're a licensed retailer or manufacturer or cultivator or anything like that. Okay, thank you, that's very helpful. Um, my second question was about ad outdoor advertisements. Um, so it, for an example, if it was a festival that was only admitting 21 plus attendees, so it's, it's compliant with the 15% rule, um, it's an outdoor sign, say a banner, at, um, that would that would be considered an advertisement. Does the health warning and the THC and the not safe for kids thing need to appear on said banner? Bryn, you want to take this? <laughs> sure. So anything that is considered an advertisement, which it sounds like this is, I may have missed the first part, but if it's if it is an advertisement, then the health warning has to appear. That's a like legislative requirement that all advertisement ha all advertisements have to contain that health warning that um, that the Department of Health worked on with the Cannabis Control Board and that appears in rule. Um, so yes, even if it's not associated with like a specific product, if it's con if it's considered an advertisement, the health warning has to be there. Okay, thank you very much, and I appreciate your time today. Um, next up, we have PGO. Hey, yeah, this is uh, Nate here from Pine Grove Organics. Um, just wanted to say thank you all for um, having this time here. Appreciate um, the dialogue and appreciate the openness. Um, Nelly, specifically, I know we we kind of talked about um, this a little bit before a couple weeks ago, and and I wanted to circle back on um, the information regarding uh, population data. Um, so you had kind of mentioned earlier that if, if an establishment said that no one under the age of 21 is allowed in this establishment, that would be acceptable. Um, my question is how strong that language has to be from the establishment. Is it that no one under the age of 21 is allowed in a business or could it be something from the business stating that uh, more than 85% of our, the population of our business is over the age of 21? So, I mean, the bar the bar is the 15% rule. I mean, if they're able to demonstrate um, a more strong, uh, stronger controls over uh, their age gating than that, then then wonderful. If they're able to say no one under the age of 21 is here, then great. That's sort of extra icing on the cake. But um, the bar for uh, the bar for age verification is is that 15%. Um, so if they were able, you know, they'd have to be able to show us, um, kind of show us how they're getting at that exact, uh, that exact number. Like, you know, we keep track of, um, the number of people that come in and like, this is the percentage, uh, but, you know, if they're, if they're carting folks at the door and they are able to say that, um, you know, no one under the age of 21 has access to um to this establishment you know so much so much the better 
OK, great. So so something stronger than just a statement uh, stating that more than 85 percent of the population is 21 up. It would have to be like actual data and, and things like that, correct? Yep. Our, our one thing to add to that, Nellie, that's um, great, is that we have our our requirement and rule is that um, the cannabis establishment has to has to demonstrate that the audience um, meets that threshold. And what we look for is reliable and verifiable information that demonstrates that not more of 50, not more than fifteen percent of the audience will be under the age of twenty one. So reliable and verifiable data, the way we have interpreted that, is to mean that. Um, there is a third party that's doing the data collection and reporting. Um, it's not the cannabis establishment itself. So I hope that's helpful. Yep, nope, makes perfect sense. Thank you both. Jesse J. Hey guys, thanks for holding this meeting. Um, so my question is, uh, do the majority of these come from rules or statute? Uh, it's a majority, majority statute. Um, rules are really uh, kind of operationalizing um, how to interpret the statute. So, uh, you know, statute says, and it's, it's linked in, in the matrix that's on our website. So you can actually go and look at what the statute says, but statute says, um, you know, no more than 15% of the audience is under the age of 21. And rule kind of gets into a little bit more of like how the board will make that determination about the 15% rule. Statute states that um, the health warning needs to appeal, appear on all advertisement. Rule tells you what that um, tells you what that health warning is and the sort of parameters over how the health warning needs to be displayed. So a lot, a lot of this is in is in state law. Um, rule is is mostly kind of shaping how it's going to work in practice. And then guidance adds a little bit more kind of flavor to it from there. OK, so something like the like product labels counting as advertising on social media. Is that something that came as an interpretation of you guys trying to make do with the statute, or was that something that is pretty clear written in statute? Um, I think Bryn could probably speak a little bit more uh, more to this, but okay. yeah, Thank we were you given. Guys. I know we were... it's um, specific, but I think it's really important for all of us, just so we know how we can implement change moving forward. So um, that's a big one is like, I think a lot of us knew, hey, we can't really post flower as a finished product, but we could at least do a picture of it in the container where you can't see any. Um, so I don't know if you could answer Bryn kind of where that one came from. Sure. So the I think it might be helpful if I read what the definition of advertisement is from the actual statute. And if anyone wants to um, take a look at the statute, it's really a short read. Um, despite the kind of enormous implications it has, it's it's not a long read. Um, you can find the definition of cannabis establishment or of uh, advertisement in 7 VSA 861. And it's any written or verbal statement illustration or depiction that's calculated to induce sales of cannabis or cannabis products, including any written, printed, graphic, or other material, billboard, sign, other outdoor display, any periodical literature, publication, or on a radio or television broadcast, the internet, or any other media. And then it also has a list of things that are not included that Nellie went through earlier, so I won't, I won't read that part. But the board interpreted um, social media posts to encompass um, this definition of advertisements if they are uh, calculated to induce the sale of cannabis product. So in the guidance, I think, is where the board kind of um, fleshed out the fact that if you're including um, images of specific products, uh, that was going to be fall pretty squarely within the definition of an advertisement. Um, so I think what Nellie was talking about earlier was ways for businesses to um, conduct some amount of advertising on social media without having to um, submit each and every one of those advertisements to the board for approval. 
So one, and Nellie described that earlier, and um, one of the ways to do that is to submit um, a plan that does not include any specific pictures or images or statements about particular products. Um, so it's not that products can't be um, included, it's that if you want to get around like um, the kind of onerous process of submitting every single advertisement to the CCB, that's one way to do it. Okay, and last quick question. Uh, you guys may not be able to answer this, um, but since we only have one other hand up, I'm going to go for it. Is um, do you know if, when, and if this is going to go to session for change at any point? Is that happening yet, or has that not even been addressed yet because we have a thousand other things to address? So it's, you know, I think what I, in my conversations with people who are um, feel burdened by the advertising restrictions is to contact your representative um, and let them know that you're struggling uh, under these advertising restrictions. Um, the board isn't advocating to the legislature that uh, we amend the advertising rules because I, that really is not kind of what, what we're here for. But if um, cannabis businesses feel like they like the restrictions are are overly burdensome or that they are struggling with their business as a result, we are encouraging them to talk to their legislators and that and that's the way to go about it. I am not aware of any um, draft bill that has been made public yet um, that would significantly amend the advertising statutes as of yet. But it's early. It's only January. So right on. Thank time. you guys so much. Jesse, I did want to add to that um, that you know the cultivators, the growers have a have an association that that uh, and the retail market is so new that um, I have heard from a few retail retail licensees that uh, they would be looking for or looking to form an association or a cannabis retail association and it would address um, topics specific to retailers because one doesn't exist right now and um, with that I'll turn it over to to Ellie um, she's the last hand up and then we'll check to see if anyone who's called in has any questions but right now Ellie thank you for taking my question um my question's about advertising that I might be sending out to like a mailing list. So if I have a list of emails um, from my customers, can I send them advertisement by email? And can I send it to a list of people that aren't necessarily my customers that I gather other places? Uh, so if they're your customers who have uh, purchased cannabis through your through your licensed retail establishment you know so you've you've carded them both upon entry and upon purchase and you've gotten their um their contact information through those means so you can like verifiably say um that they are over the age of 21 um that would be that would potentially be allowable again we'd have to we'd have to see that data but it would potentially be allowable as far as uh folks that are not your customers um it, potentially we again we would have to see the data to make sure that um that it meets that 15 percent rule and those if i was emailing um advertisements to the people on my mailing list that i collected their information at point of sale with the ids and such would i still need to run that um by the ccb before i send it out or could i send them emails without running it to you you would need to you would need to submit it to us um the the data is just one piece of the of the evaluation process there's still we still need to go through the whole rest of the matrix to make sure that your advertisements are compliant with um with state law and board rule thank you we do have another hand up and that's uh michael bradshaw Hi there. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, for doing this tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate also uh, a little bit of the clarification, and I really um, like hearing uh, 
folks talking about um, getting together and trying to uh, make these less onerous on the business owners. And um, because I'm wondering if there are some certain things that we can do without going to the legislators. And, and most specifically, is it, there any, I, I, are there four people currently that are employed as part of the uh, board? And I'm wondering if there is a possibility, and we could help you with an advertisement for this, uh, for an employment position, but meeting one time a week to review ads, it may not seem like there's a lot coming in right now because it's so difficult for people to meet these guidelines, but it just does not make any sense whatsoever to have, I, I could see somebody reviewing ads every single day at some point and doing it once a week, it just does not make any sense. It makes it so that it's, uh, it does not make any sense for people to run at least print advertising that I can think of or digital advertising. The same with the health uh, label, which I understand that there's certain uh, language in the statutes, but the it seems to me as though the um, health warnings that a company, for instance, alcohol currently, or even um, tobacco, are much less than what is being required of this Michael? industry. I may be wrong, but okay. um, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you there just because this is this is great public commentary and we're grateful for it. But um, I am trying to get to the questions that people have in our in our limited amount of time. And I will note for for you that um, we are in the middle of a of a rule amendment process. And very shortly, we will have um, dates posted on our website for uh, public hearings for people to comment on our rule amendments. We're amending rule one, two, and four. So essentially our regulatory framework for the adult use industry, we're in the process of amending those now. So that would be a great place to come and give us your comments. Um, Thank you. That's exactly, I was not asking the question. I was, you're right. I was putting up too much of the commentary toward the front end to then come around and say, how can we potentially, are there things that we can do to try to address some of these things without going to the legislature? So thank you. Um, yeah, please. Is there like, well, I guess uh, like a newsletter or something like that that we can. Yeah, Nellie, sent, Nellie sends out a weekly, um, yeah. a weekly right. letter that you should, if you're not, if you're not on that list, um, send her an email and she'll add you. Uh, I want to just note that we're a minute away from seven o'clock um, and I am very protective of my staff's time. And so I'm going to bring this to a close very soon. I did want to open it up to people on the phone. Um, I don't think that they have had an opportunity yet to ask a question. So if Carrie and Nellie are willing to stay for another minute while we see if the people on the phone have a question. Um, I think that you press star six to unmute yourself if you are um, calling on the phone and you have a question. And you can just and you can just ask your fire away. No one's unmuted. Okay, I do see we have a couple more hands raised, but because it's seven o'clock, I do this every time. I'm gonna I'm gonna say please um, submit those questions to us. You can email us. Um, Nellie will remind you of the appropriate email address to use, uh, and we will get back to you. But um, yeah, go ahead, Nellie. So uh, advertising questions should go to ccb.advertising at vermont.gov. And I'll, uh, I'll put that into the chat so everyone can see it as well. It's already there as well now. Oh, wonderful. Great. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's there. And uh, please email us uh, your questions. We will, uh, we will get back to you as, uh, as, quickly, as quickly as we can. All right, thank you all very much for joining us. Um, and we will have another Q&A session coming up soon. Um, and just keep an eye on your email or our website uh, to find out more about the next Q&A session. All right, thank you all, have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.